This is a video on using a test for a paired difference. The question states, are average SAT math scores higher the second time students take the exam? Results from nine randomly selected students who took the exam twice were tabulated. Use a level of significance of 0 0.05. So here are the results. We'll see that we have our nine students. They each had the first attempt and the second attempt. So this student went from 490 and did improve to 520. And you can look through, and most of them did improve, but some didn't. For example, this student here went from 602 to 575. So we want to find out whether we have statistically significant evidence to show improvement. So let's write down our null hypothesis. We can say that H0 is that mu sub d is equal to 0. Now let's talk about what this means. Mu is a mean, and d is, stands for the difference in the data. So the very first d value will be 490 minus 520, which is negative 30. The second is 480 minus 490, which is negative 10. So we can see that each of these pairs of data will give us a D value, the difference value. And we want to find out if the mean difference is equal to zero. Our alternative hypothesis is that mu sub D is less than zero. That's because we want to show that the second try is larger than the first try. And if you subtract the first try minus the second try, we get a negative number if the second try is larger. So now let's crunch our numbers. I'm going to put this into a computer. And I put this into StatCrunch. And I typed in all the first try numbers and all the second try numbers. And then at this point, I go to Stat. This is a T statistic because we do not know the population standard deviation for each of these differences. It's also paired data because we can say that first student took the exam the first try and the second try. So we could pair these two numbers to each student. So then I click paired. And I put in first try for the sample 1, second try for the sample 2, and I have sample 1 minus sample 2. Notice again, if we want to show that that is negative, that means sample 1 should be the first try and sample 2 should be the second try. Then I hit next, and I want a hypothesis test. I want the mean difference to be equal to 0 for the null hypothesis. And the alternative is that the mean is less than zero, so I make sure this is a less than. And then I hit calculate, and here's my statistics. So you'll notice that we have a first try minus a second try. Our sample difference, that's the mean of our sample Ds, is negative 26.11111. Our degrees of freedom is eight. That's because we have nine pairs, and nine minus one is eight. Our T statistic is negative 1.9, and our p-value, that's the important number. So our p-value is 0 0.0449. What that says is if it really is true that the difference between the first try and the second try is equal to 0, then there would only be a 4.49% chance of obtaining a sample difference as small as negative 26.11111. Our alpha is 0.05, and that's our level of significance, which says that if mu sub d really is 0, and we were to do a pair difference with nine randomly selected students many, 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 many times, then 5% of the time we will wrongly reject the null hypothesis. In particular, p is very small. 0 0.0449 is smaller than 0 0.05. And when we have a small p, 
our conclusion is to reject H0, accept H1, and say that there is statistically significant evidence to conclude that the mean SAT exam score is larger on the second try than on the first try. And I'm done with the problem.